OK, so the game's been out for a little while now. Yeah. Uh, people have had their chance to give it a game. Yeah. You've obviously been seeing a lot of feedback, especially yeah. on the Bill Hooks community yes. page we've set up. Yeah. How have you felt about things since then? It's been very good. Um, touching wood, I haven't had any, any real negative comments so far. People have seemed to have taken to the game quickly. They seem to be playing it without um, too much trouble. And um, the questions I've had on the Facebook page have all been very clever and intelligent. And it's made me think about, well, I could improve the wording there. I mean, sometimes I think, how does he possibly think I mean that by what I said? But um, it's, uh, it's a quote much used by wargamers. But uh, you know, this goes back as far as H.G. Wells when he said, um, there are few aspects of uh, constructive legislation we don't have the higher regard for, having tried to make a right result from playing t with t tin soldiers on the floor. And it's, it's true. It, um, converting, this started off, for example, it was a two-page play sheet, which made sense to me, and most of the time made sense to the other people I was, I was playing, playing the game with. But once you go beyond the privacy of your own home, you have to expand it and explain what you mean by each stage of the game. And that's, that's been very instructive. Um, I learned a lot when I did the series of Paper Soldiers books with Peter Dennis for Helion. Uh, I think I had, to, I had to write something like 10 sets of rules in a year. And each one of those had to be capable of being understood by somebody who never played a war game before. So you really have to spell it out. Not, you don't have to quite go so far as to tell people how to roll dice, but it's, it's, not, it's not much more than that. Yeah, I mean, you've managed to keep it quite tight and concise yeah. within these yeah. rules. And obviously, now that it's out in the wide world, there's a lot of people who are asking questions about how to expand it for yes. larger sizes, yes. different, different periods and yeah. things like that. Yeah. You seem quite receptive to that. Is that something you'd considered before the game came uh, out? I always thought it would, it would, it would expand into it certainly Renaissance Italy or Hundred Years' War. France without too much difficulty. Um, war gamers always have a horrible tendency to want to go large with anything. Uh, so the first pl the first game play test I saw on the Facebook page, instead of starting off with 100 points or 100 figures aside, he doubled it up and he got three 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 uh, commanders, three actual human beings on each side rather than a one-to-one -one game. But it, it still more or less works. So, um, the, you know, people can take it where they like. Once once the baby's left the nest, you know, he, 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 it can go anywhere. Um, what's been interesting, actually, is that uh, although the game is designed as a big skirmish or a small battle, if you actually regarded these wards as being the same as a, 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 a big battle, Wars of the Roses ward. The actual outcome's not that different. Um, so it might work. We could, have, we could have units that were three or four times the size, uh, which would give you the, the, uh, the look of a proper Wars of the Roses battle. But essentially, it's, it's, a, it's a small battle. There's more going on here than I think there would be in a, in a real Wars of the Roses big battle. I think they were rather dull, scrum-like affairs. So making a game out of that is quite difficult. I've done it, and they're, they're not much fun to play. But this is supposed to be a bit more entertaining. But you put it out there now. So it's out there now. People can, <laughs> people can take it where, wherever they want to, and I'm sure they will. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you're, you're quite unfamiliar, shall we say, with Facebook. You don't tend to use it a lot. No, I've, 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 uh, I've, avo I've avoided entering the 21st century. How have you found it since getting into this community? Uh, it's horribly addictive. Uh, I have to say, so I'm looking at the damn thing every 20 minutes or so. I must try and stop doing that. But it's early stage of the game, so my policy has been, if somebody posts something, give them an encouraging reply as quickly as possible. And if somebody comes up with a question, try and answer it as quickly as possible, even if it's one I've never even considered before, which has happened a couple of times. Yeah, it seems like you've you've got your little notebook with you of a yeah. so that you've been thinking. Yeah. Of. So you definitely seem to be taking an active part in it and really thinking about yes. what's coming back to yeah. you. Yeah, it is, and it's been it's been interesting because, uh, like I say, once it's out there, you're never quite sure where it's where it's going to go. Um, people do come up with with some quite smart questions, which is good. So, is there anything that's been particularly surprising to you, like one one inquiry or one thing that was raised? Um, there was a question about. What happens when troops are defending an obstacle? And um, I used the example of archers um, 
defending a line of stakes. Now, we haven't got any stakes here, but let's, for the sake of argument, say these are stakes. Now, initially I thought, well, you know, the archers line up behind the, uh, the stake wall and then uh, troops always fall into disorder if they cross an obstacle of any kind. So it could be a wall, could be a stake wall, could be a, could be a, a stream, and it, it stops them in their tracks. So they get across it, but they fall into disarray, which led me to think, well, Actually, the best way of defending an obstacle, and this all came up from this question, is not to line it, but to fall back, be slightly back from it. So you let the enemy come across it, fall into disarray, and then sh shoot them. Uh, and that's a much more effective way. And that, I hadn't really thought that through until I'd had that question. So that was quite interesting. I wish I'd talked to you a few days ago. I've just made loads of lines of staves that have got a flat back to line up with the movement <laughs> trays. So now I'm going to have to change my tactics. <laughs> that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you said you started out way back when just oh, doing yes. carbon copy rules. Yes, yes. This is obviously very different. Yep. Do you think, on the whole, it's a positive that there's this area of community feedback? Oh, absolutely, also? absolutely. Because, uh, you know, the best you could hope for back in the day was, you know, uh, playing a game with half a dozen, uh, half a dozen mates down a, somebody's cellar. But uh, these days, um, it, it can go international uh, within, within no time at all. Um, as I say, it's keeping me busy, but it's, it's, it's been interesting. And it seems like, for now, Bill Hooks is very much going to be your focus going ahead. It is, yeah. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a butterfly when it comes to war games rules. I, I don't hang around for too long. The trouble is that once I've moved on from something, I set it aside. And you know, I, I often get rid of the source material, or rarely get rid of figures, but I sometimes get rid of the source material. And then three or four years later, I think, why did I get rid of that? I, mean, I need to do something with it again. So that was, I virtually had to rebuild my War of the Roses library because I'd got rid of it, the stuff three or four years ago because I was fed up of it. Anyway, it keeps the booksellers in business. <laughs> well, I mean, you're, it sounds like you're inevitably going to move on and butterfly your way to something else. Yeah. Will the process that you've gone through with Bill Hooks now inform that in any way and how you might change that early development? It all depends if, it, if, it, if I think it's going to be something that I want to publish to a wider audience. Um, Bill Hooks was one of those games that come across very, 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 very rarely that somehow seemed to just hit a sweet spot and work. Everybody I tried it with amongst my, my own small group uh, said, yeah, this is what you need to do. You need to take this further, and it was it was Steve Wood, um, uh, a neighbour of mine in Bingham, who who really pushed the idea of pushing um, uh, Bill Hooks beyond the, beyond our local club. He said, "This is good. You need to put it out there." And he was quite right, actually, given the comments we've had so far. Um, it works, and what's interesting about rules that work is that if you come up with a situation that you hadn't envisaged before, the rules have an internal logic that give you a right outcome. And this has happened on a couple of occasions with this. So obviously uh, our boss Dan liked yep. this game so much he, yep. he got in on the act. Yep. Um, do you want to talk through that experience a little bit? Yeah, well, um, this has come a long way from what it started out as, which was a rather scruffy, closely typed half a dozen pages of uh, word process document that made a lot of sense to me, but not anybody else. So. Um, Actually, I'm, I'm very impressed with this. It, it looks very professional. And um, Dan was keen to, at every stage in, in the, in the uh, production, to make sure that there were very clear examples of different types of actions in the game. So we've got shooting and melee and things like that. And of course, the, the other thing that's changed dramatically is, is the cards. They were, they were, shall we say, functional when we started out. But these are things of beauty. So. Um, and of course, having the uh, Peter Dennis artwork, courtesy of the, of the Perrys, really is uh, the icing on the cake, as far as I'm concerned. Cool. I mean, how long in the process has this been, from Dan first playing it to the discussion? Well, I mean, like everything in 2020, it's been affected by COVID. We started uh, pushing some figures around just before the lockdown, it was in February, late February, and then um, the original plan was to have it in, the, I think it was the April or the May issue. So we've lost a few months on that. Um, but it, I think it's probably meant there's been more time to work on the, on the production, and it, 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 uh, it certainly has paid off. It's a very attractive publication. So you've got a beautiful baby now. Yes, I have, yeah. <laughs>